Hey, I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Animal Logic. Although owls were used to deliver messages in Harry Potter, in real life, pigeon posts would be much more efficient. Owls would probably only work at night and have to be paid in dead mice. Pigeons have been used to carry messages for thousands of years. They usually only carry them one way, which is annoying given that you have to transport them back again, but they have been trained to go back and forth. In the late 1800s, there was actually a Great Barrier Pigeon Gram service set up to deliver mail between New Zealand and Great Barrier Island. Pigeons have carried messages behind enemy lines since at least the 6th century BC, and were used by Genghis Khan and a whole host of others set on world domination. During World Wars I and II, pigeons were regularly used to send messages instead of risking human lives, often flying through hails of gunfire as enemy troops tried to shoot them down. When the wars were over, 32 pigeons received British Medals of Honor for displaying conspicuous gallantry and devotion to duty. Those pigeons made those incredible journeys because they have an ability that we humans can only dream of. They can find their way home. You can take a homing pigeon from their roost, put them in a closed box, put the box in a car, drive far away, open the box, and voila! The pigeon will fly out, circle around a few times, and head straight for home. This is like putting someone in the trunk of your car, driving 100 kilometers out, releasing them, and expecting them to find their way back, with no GPS. Homing pigeons have been known to fly more than a thousand kilometers at 80 kilometers an hour to get home from some place they've never been before. They seem to have multiple backup systems to perform the feat. They use visual landmarks on the ground, roads, church steeples, rivers, as well as other cues like olfaction, infrasound, the magnetic field of the earth, and the polarization patterns of the sun. Although it's been hundreds of millions of years since humans and pigeons have shared a common evolutionary path, we still have a lot in common. This is probably because we're both highly visual, diurnal animals. Darwin was a big pigeon fan and in fact used pigeons as a great example of selective breeding, which helped convince Victorian readers that natural selection was a thing. Although pigeon brains are much smaller than ours, both absolutely and relative to body size, they are mighty. Pigeons have been used to study all sorts of human behaviors. Take gambling, for example. Like us, pigeons have been known to take a risk or two, if the rewards are great enough. They also demonstrate exceptional memory for images, even remembering thousands of individual photos for years at a time. B.F. Skinner, the famous psychologist who founded the field of radical behaviorism, used pigeons as one of his favorite experimental subjects. Much of what we now know about the effects of reinforcement on human behavior, used in everything from teaching to addiction research, to working with children with autism came from Skinner's research with pigeons. Skinner also devised Project Pigeon, which put trained pigeons in missiles. A pigeon would be placed in each compartment of a missile and peck at a target on the screen, thus guiding the missile. This proved much more accurate than the technology of the day, but it was a tough sell to get the US Navy to trust their missiles to a bunch of pigeons. Let me know what animal you want to see next, and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Also, I want to direct you to some people who are doing some great work in my city, the Toronto Wildlife Center. I'll put a link down below. Make sure you go check them out and donate if you can. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.